Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Eustace Farmer, and I have a question for you. How would you like to be able to do this little trick? Well, I'm going to show you how and more right after this. Silent scan. Alrighty, so the first thing I'd like to say is I'd like to recommend that you download Notepad++. It's a free program, very safe and reliable. It really streamlines things when you're going through XML files. Um, you can use the regular Notepad on the computer, but it doesn't really organize things very well. So I will leave a link down in the description for everything we talk about today. Okay. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into this PC documents, my games, farming simulator 2017. Now this also works for um, editions of farming simulator 13 and 15. I don't know about anything earlier than that, but I know this is the same procedure for 13 through 17. Okay. So you're going to come down in this folder and you're going to look for the game XML. Okay. Do not do game settings XML. You won't find it in there. And if you tinker with things in there, you can break things. <laughs> so you're going to go into game XML. You're going to right click on it. Open with Notepad++. Now I already have it open, so I'll just go ahead and jump over to the screen. Okay, so once you open it up, you'll be greeted with this. And let me get rid of these other little things here so it won't get confused. So in here, you're going to see several things, not to confuse you, but um, your screen resolution. Okay, so if you're ever having a problem, you set up a new monitor and you set it in the game, but it doesn't seem to be working right, you can come into here and you can set your um, screen resolutions in here as well. But what we're looking for is right down here on line number 41. You'll see the line just above it says development, and then under that says controls. Yours will say false. All you have to do is click within the little brackets, back that up, and write true. And you want it in small letters just like you see here, okay? Don't mess with the start mode or anything like that. All you have to do is type true, and then you will come up to the top and save. Now, while I'm in here, I just want to give you guys a heads up. There is this YouTuber out there. Um, and he's got this video going around and um, he's telling kids that cannot run Farming Simulator right um, to change this renderer setting. Um, there are other renderers out there, um, but this D3D11, this is the proper setting um, to run the game. So if you see this in here and your game isn't running properly, it's because your computer is not equipped to handle the game. That's it. There's nothing more to be said about it. There's nothing else you can do but either update your graphics card and um, other things or, you know, build yourself a gaming PC. But when you change that setting, you're opening yourself up to other problems. So if you come across this video, um, please don't alter that setting for your own good. Okay? All right. So that's all we need to do in here. All right, everybody. So here we are on beautiful Sandy Bay pre-release map. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much, Oxygen David. Beautiful, beautiful map. You guys will be getting it soon. So let's get down to brass tacks. I'm going to put up a little keyboard illustration here for you. So as you see, the top keyboard is an American keyboard. The bottom keyboard is a British keyboard. And we're going to be using what's called the tilde key, T-I-L-D-E. In the American keyboard, it's in the very most upper left corner above your tab okay and on a British keyboard it is in the lower right hand portion of the keyboard just to the left of the enter key is the most common place you'll find it if it's not there for you look around your keyboard it's sure to be there and it looks like a little wavy dash line it denotes approximation that's what it means estimate or approximation there's also other meanings and applications for it in the computer and finance world but we don't need to know that today <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and hit our tilde key button twice. One, 
too. As you see, I got a little hashtag and a blinking cursor. Now I can either type in something manually, a command, or I can just use my tab button and do some of the predetermined ones. We're going to do tab, and we're going to tab over to GS toggle flight and no HUD mode. That's how you're going to fly. I'll hit enter, and as you see, mine says false. That's because I've already got flight mode enabled. So yours will say true. If you do it and it does say false, just do it again and it'll come up true. You could have had a little hiccup or something. No big deal. So there you go. We'll get into some of the other stuff in a minute. Now, just hit your J button. J is in gem on your keyboard. And then you're going to hit your Q button. That's going to raise you up in the air. There you go. Now, if I hold my shift key down while I'm doing my rising, you'll go faster. That's your run button. Now I have player speed mod installed, so I can hit either number 1, 2, or 3 on my number row and adjust my speeds. I'm going to hit number 3 maximum, and I'll show you what that does. We'll walk forward. You'll see it better on the ground, but it increases your speed exponentially. <laughs> okay, so as you see, W, A, S, and D, your typical direction keys are used, along with your shift button to run. Now to lower yourself, you can do that two ways. If you want to be gradual, just hit the E button. E is in Edward. Hold your shift and you can go down faster. Now, if you want to go down in a real big hurry, you can just hit your J button and deactivate flight mode. And down you go. Now, let me get away from the water here. Since you're in game, you don't have to tab to flight mode again for now. You just hit J again and you can activate it again. Once you leave your game, you have to enable this again each and every time you load your game, okay? If you want to use it. Um, and along with some of the other functions. All right, so let's go ahead and look at some of these additional functions. So we'll hit our tilde key again twice. Well, actually, I'm going to hit it just once for now because I want to show you this. So this is basically, all this is, is a convenient on-screen version of your log files. And this is the shortened view. If you want to see the entire log file, you can scroll through it by just hitting your page up buttons and your page down button. Okay? That's all you have to do. So sometimes when you're loading a new mod or a map or something like that, and let's say, oh, there's a problem, but, oh, that's strange. It's not generating an error. Well, chances are it is, and you'll have to scroll up to see it. <laughs> um, you're also going to see errors in there from previous things that you may have even deleted. Um, once the stuff is in there, it's not going to come out. Even if you delete the text inside of the log file itself, uninstall and reinstall the game, and that'll start it fresh. Okay, so let me hit the tilde key one more time. So that's twice. And we got our blinking cursor in front of our hash mark. And now I'm just going to tab through. Um, enable frame rate limit. So that's an interesting one. I'll get back to that in a second. Let me get you through the other ones. There's if you want to have autosave, you can set the autosave interval. If you're one that likes to own all the fields when you start a game, you can just hit enter on this one and it will purchase all the fields for you. And GS uh, cheat money. Now this is a money mod and that by all fields that might be part of this mod to tell you the truth. Um, but this is a great mod and it only works for developer mode. So if I just hit enter now, it's going to give me an automatic cool $10 million. <laughs> but let's say that I would like to um, add a custom amount or take away some money. I can do that right on the fly. All I have to do is, let's say I want to take away money. So as you see in my top right corner, I have $5,305,550. Let me just hit minus, and then let's do $5 million. Now hit enter, and as you see, it took it away. Let's say I want to add a custom amount. Well, I'll just GS, cheap money. You could do it that way or tab to it. Do a space. I don't have to hit plus now. I just can add something. So let's do $2 million. Enter. I got my $2 million. So there you go. You don't have to go into the XML file to edit money when you have this mod in developer mode activated. Okay, let's see what other trouble we can get into. You hit that and you know what's going to happen. Bye-bye. <laughs> going to exit the game. And that's pretty much um, actually no. Let me get back to that set daytime and I'll show you. GS start rain. Hit enter. And as you see, it's not going to start the rain right away. If you advance time a little bit, the rainstorm will come up. There you go. Finally. <laughs> okay. There's another one I wanted to show you here that's pretty handy. Set time of day. So you can change the time of day to whatever you would like. But you're not going to put the full time, like 0400 hours or 1800 with the zeros. You're just going to use the first two digits. So meaning, if I want it to be 4 o'clock in the morning... 
I'll just hit number four, enter, and it's 4 a.m. If I wanted to have it at four o'clock in the evening, I'm just going to put 16 for 1600 hours. I'll hit enter, and there we go. So anytime you'd like to have the day, that's how you do that. So let's go through it a little bit more. Now we saw that set frame rate limiter thing, right? Let me get out of here and I'll show you something. That's the same thing as hitting F3 on your keyboard. But there's a caveat to that. In order to take advantage to unlock your FPS, so the game automatically locks it at 60, but let's say you have 144 hertz monitor. That's what I have. There's monitors that go up even higher than that. Um, but anything over 60 hertz, this will work. Um, you also need to have a DisplayPort connection okay in the back of your monitor and you're going to want to have a display port cable um, don't go to a big box store and get one just go to a smaller mom and pop type electronic store and you can get a very good quality one i got one for 19 dollars, and it works fantastic so don't fall for that you know 200 hundred dollar cable baloney <laughs> so display port cable and a monitor with a hertz rating over 60 um, so um, i also my monitor is a one millisecond monitor so if you're a gamer and you're looking for a monitor, anything between 1 and 5 milliseconds is very good um, for gaming. Um, anything that goes higher than that, when you're starting to get into the 7 and 8 millisecond range, you're getting into the, the typical user um, range. And if you're playing like online competitive first-person shooters and stuff, you're going to want the fastest refresh rate you can get um, because that means that you're going to be able to see your opponent and react to them before they can see and react to you basically <laughs> and then you have to be good <laughs> okay so if you hit f3 and as you see let me turn it off for you so there we are at 60 so i'll hit f3 boom it unlocks my fps now i don't know if you can see this but let me hit f3 again and shut it off when i move around you see a lot of blurring and screen tear a lot unlocking my fps to take full advantage of my monitor's capabilities, that lessens it a drastic amount. I mean, it really takes it away. You still see some, but, I mean, even when you move your head in real life, you're going to get some blurring. <laughs> but it really does a dramatic difference. So that's how you unlock your FPS. If you're using an HDMI cable, it's not going to work. I don't care what any of these people tell you at those big electronic stores. HDMI cables are only capable of transmitting 60 FPS of data at a time. You'll see cables out there that say they can do 120 and 200 FPS. Baloney. I've had the cables. Return them properly. Doesn't work. <laughs> All right. So while we're on the subject, if you hit F2, that's going to bring up and take away your on-screen FPS meter, as you see up in the top right corner. So I think that's just about it. Um, I've told you a little bit of what you really need to know, and I've told you a lot of things that you probably don't even care about or don't even need to know, <laughs> but you have it. Um, all right, sorry about that, folks. I had to get away from that military plane flying overhead. <laughs> so I will leave a link in the description uh, for the Notepad++, and I will leave a link also for my Google Docs page. You can go into that link and you can download um, the printed instructions for yourself to follow along with that or you can just bring up the video this video on your phone and you can follow along on your PC that way um, but at least you have a printed reference as well so it'll be there for you enjoy it there's um, towards the back of the documents the last pages you're gonna see a whole list of functions on there now some of them like the GS add bail GS fill vehicle GS cheat feeding those are part of that GS uh, money cheat mod and those particular functions I did not find to work so the the money one does but the other ones didn't seem to work so <laughs> disregard those so I think also what I'll do is I will leave you a link for the GS cheat money mod so that way you can download it and you can enjoy um, that as well so as always, I'd like to thank you for tuning in. It's a pleasure to have you, and I look forward to talking with you down in the comment section. So please do put your feedback and tips down in there. And if you uh, enjoyed the video, please do hit the like button. It really helps me out a lot. And if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed yet, please do consider subscribing. I would really appreciate that as well. It would be nice to have you. So until we meet again, my friends, take great care of yourself, okay? And bye-bye for now.